In the preceding session, we have gained a fundamental understanding of harmonic analysis. Now we look at the application of the concepts to two distinct examples. Our first example is that of a simple single degree of freedom spring mass damper. Our second example is the application to the harmonic response of the arm of a drone. Getting to our first example, the spring mass damper, we have a mass that is held by a spring and a damper, and we have a harmonic force F applied over a range of frequencies, and we will observe the displacement U. The equation of motion for this simple case can be reduced down to this equation. We see the forcing function on the right hand side has the harmonic excitation. Now the closed form solution of the unknown, which is U, can be solved for using differential equations. And the details are omitted for this discussion as we focus on the application of the equation. We can also derive the phase angle phi and the critical damping. We will then compute the damping ratio for the supplied damping of the damper C. We also provide the damped natural frequency equation. Let's graph the displacement U and vary our imposed excitation frequency. We also vary the damping ratio on these graphs. We normalize the graph to make it simple and clear. When the opposed loading circular frequency, uppercase omega, approaches the natural frequency, which is lowercase omega, resonance occurs as indicated by the spikes in the graph. An increase in the damping decreases the amplitude of the response for all imposed frequencies, but has the most noticeable effect at resonance. A small change in damping has a very large effect on the response near resonance. The damped natural frequency omega d is less than the natural frequency omega, as we can see when zeta is 0.2, with a slight shift to the resonance peak less than 1.0. Now one comment on zeta 0.2, this is actually a high damping ratio and it may be present for some elastomers or rubbers or etc. But the damping ratio of most engineered metals is typically less than 0.05 or 5% or less. So the difference between the damped natural frequency and the natural frequency at these lower damping levels is a fraction of a percent and typically is not significant. Another observation is that the phase angle always passes through plus or minus 90 degrees at resonance for any amount of damping, and we can see that in the graph. Phase angle reports the relative timing of the excitation to the response. So when we have uppercase omega over lowercase omega around 0.6 and zeta of 0.03, the phase angle graph reports a phase angle of around minus 4 degrees, and looking at the graph, we can see the output will slightly lag the input, meaning the force is max, the displacement is not yet max, and comes a bit later in time. Okay, now when we have uppercase omega over lowercase omega equal to one, or the resonance case, with zeta equals 0.03, the phase angle reports a phase angle of minus 90 degrees, and looking at the graph, we can see the output will greatly lag the input. At this sweeping phase angle, when the block has no force applied, the block is experiencing maximum displacement. Finally, when we have uppercase omega over lowercase omega equal to 2 and zeta equals 0.03, the phase angle graph reports a phase angle of minus 177 degrees and looking at the graph we can see the output will almost completely be opposite the input. At this sweeping phase angle, when the block has the minimum force applied, the block is experiencing the maximum displacement. Let's now move on to our second example, which is the arm of a drone. Drones are used for commercial and recreational purposes. Now, regardless of the usage, most have sensitive equipment electronics, especially cameras. It is not desirable to induce vibration from the motors and blades into the drone, so the vibration should be minimized. Not only that, but a motor that experiences excessive vibration may fail and the results of which can have serious consequences. Now in this example, we will study the instability at resonance from the motor mount to the arm as shown in this video. As the motor RPM increases, a slight out of balance or perturbation excites a natural frequency in the drone arm causing severe resonance. 
Decreasing the RPM below the critical natural frequency, the resonance is eliminated. So what causes this and how to predict this using simulation? Also, what design improvements could minimize or eliminate the resonance? The example we show is not meant to match the drone design in the video, but rather illustrate the concept. Okay, first back to what causes this resonance. Let's use the drone design we have here as a simulation model as an example. The thrust force generally acts vertically for each of the motors, but a slight disturbance or perturbation on a flimsy arm or motor support allows the motor to twist along the arm, resulting in a component of the force in the lateral direction. As the arm twists in the other direction, the force pulls in that other direction. This results in a harmonic lateral loading that repeats sinusoidally. When the motor RPM approaches the natural frequency in the twist direction along the length of the arm, resonance occurs. Now in the video, the motor support has a very soft silicon rubber, which permits the motor to deflect. In our design, we'll start with an arm that is made of a fairly soft material. The effect is the same, and that is the torsional stiffness of the design is low, permitting deformations that allow this lateral component of the thrust vector to develop. Now, there can also be other sources of lateral force, and a simple one is a blade that is not balanced. If the center of gravity of the blade is not exactly along the spin axis of the motor, harmonic excitation will also result. So we answered the first question on why this happens, but how to predict with simulation? Modal analysis shows the twisting torsion natural frequency is 230 Hz, which is around 13,800 RPM. A harmonic analysis with the lateral sinusoidal forces on the motor is run with a sweep over 5 to 1,000 Hz. Now making a plot of the frequency response, we see the peak at the frequency of 230 Hz, which is when the excitation of 230 Hz matches the natural frequency of 230 Hz. That peak value tells us the expected amplitude of the motor displacement from that twisting to be around 0.04 inches. So now that we can simulate this, what design improvements could minimize or eliminate the resonance? In our drone example, the arm is made of nylon. Let's replace the arm with a woven carbon fiber with fiber angles at plus and minus 45 degrees to greatly increase the torsional stiffness of the arm. We model that and we repeat the harmonic analysis. Notice in the frequency response plot, the resonance at 230 Hz is gone. So when the blade is passing through this RPM, it will not excite the drone arm since there is no natural frequency there. While there are still some peaks in the frequency response plot in our modified design to investigate, such as close to 50 and then another one over at 600 Hz, they may be outside the actual flight operations of the drone. In other words, our blades will likely pass through 50 Hz, which is 3000 RPM quickly, and may never even get to such a high speed at 600 Hz or 36,000 RPM. So potentially this is an improved design. The frequency response plot gives a clear indication that we should not expect any resonance between 50 and 600 Hz. And compared to the original design, this is a large improvement in the dynamic characteristics of the design.